And what made me volunteer was, um, I lived in a house called Brunkludder, and that was at the back of Tom Banner Camp. The house overlooked the camp. And when you see the trains pulling in with all of the uh, Ugandan Asians, um, I went down to the camp uh, to find out if there's anything that I could do um, to help out. Um, and it started off with me um, helping people, uh, guide people off the train, uh, down to, off the platform and towards the camp. So uh, that went on for about two or three days and then suddenly, uh, being an avid uh, table tennis player at that time, I was at, uh, asked if I would get involved with the youth club, which I did. Um, and that was the um, time of the vol volunteering, um, which was, uh, it was great fun. I certainly got hammered at table tennis many, many times. I used to play for the count, uh, 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 county te uh, tennis. We used to have a, 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 a table tennis tables in the, le the leisure centre. We had a new leisure centre, the table tennis there. We formed ourselves into a club and we thought we were good, really good. I mean, you know, good. I thought some of the players were excellent. And um, it was three nights a week playing table tennis. The opportunity came with um, me thinking I could teach them how to play table tennis. What I didn't realize that they were 10 times better than me, especially some of the players. Oh, they were absolutely unbelievable. But the laughs we used to have, you know, it, was, uh, it was good, absolutely good quality, you know, fun laughs, making everybody um, cheer them up. Really good, really good. I, en I, I enjoyed doing it. Um, but the, the memories are, I can't remember all the names now, but there was a lot of people there that knew me by name. And uh, you know, it, it was nice. I walk into the youth club, hello, Charlie. And you know, all my lads shout, fancy another beating. You know, and I just, just laughed about it. We just went and played table tennis. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, you had a fun. That was, that was the point of it all. And it also made them feel a lot more welcome to the area. That was very important. The camp itself, I know very well because my father served in the armed forces and he was actually stationed in Tomvana. Hence, that's when we came here. I actually arrived here in 1968 um, and then started work, after, after leaving school, started work into, um, into the garage trade. Uh, I worked as a panel beater and sprayer and uh, did that for near uh, six years and then I decided after that to go fishing. But the camp itself um, was very quiet, it started to um, decline well, in uh, property uh, side of it was uh, going downhill. Um, and then we heard that the, the camp was going to be used for Ugandan Asians. Having been travelled abroad with my father, um, I wondered what the impact would be for the local community here. But having been involved with all forms of race, uh, people um, from different countries, it didn't matter to me. I just went down and, and, and tried to help out. And it was great fun, and I, I made a lot of friends uh, while I was there. And one in particular I used to take home for lunch. Um, and he was absolutely fantastic. And he always said to me, the biggest respect for it would be to take him into my family. Um, it was lovely. My mother was there, um, and uh, it, was, it was great. My father was all, had been posted abroad. So therefore, we, we decided that we were going to settle down in the Tawin area because we loved it here. Tawin has always been classified as a military town because it had more of a camp. It had Tom Vanek camp. There was a camp at Clannigrain. Uh, so therefore, um, it was absolutely fantastic that this camp got reused again for a very important uh, occasion. It gave homes to people, which was the main thing. 
only temporary homes, but they still had homes. They had somewhere to go. I was surprised how many did volunteer to come and help out. But when you see people going through hardship, then you suddenly realize that you wouldn't like to be in that position yourself. So it's just a, um, a thing that w I think people do, um, especially when people are in a crisis point. Put it this way, I was in, in a position where I could help people. And it's nice to be able to help people. And uh, I felt great. And um, when they actually left, um, it was some sad goodbyes, because you made some very good friends. Poignant moments were, um, to me, was basically how the town accepted them. Because it must have been a tremendous culture shock to see um, people on the high street dressed in their Indian wares. Um, and it, it, it was a shock because all of a sudden you've got, I, don't, uh, I forget how many people there were, there must have been, what, five, six hundred there? Um, and all of a sudden you've got Asians in the town, when you consider in those day, days there was very little of coloured people or anything like that, so the, it, the culture shock was big time. But everybody, except, uh, you know, I was very surprised how everybody accepted it so quickly. That was the main poignant thing to me, is the fact that, whoa, we've got a people here that are used to the, 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 in, living in Wales, the Welsh culture and all this sort of thing, and suddenly all this other culture descends on them. But it was fabulous to see how it was all accepted. That was the most poignant thing that I, I, I can recall. What you mean at the time um, was a tyrant. He was a dictator, like uh, most dictators. What happens? They start to push their weight around and, and they bully people. Um, so you, you look back at it, and this is why I'm glad that I live in the, in the UK. It's because it's a free and democratic country without the bullying, um, except my wife. <laughs> my aim was to try and make people feel welcome. That was the most important thing, because they'd gone through a tra traumatic experience, which we have no ca uh, comprehension of what it's like to have that done to them. But after seeing what we're seeing at the moment, I look at it and I think to myself, I'm not kidding you, we are lucky. We are very lucky and very privileged people in the UK. And that's very important and it should stay that way. Well, I'm looking at Ukraine at the moment and the Ugandan Asians have gone through a similar thing, but not as violent as it is in Ukraine. Um, and I'm glad that Europe is actually taking in the refugees and welcoming them and giving them homes. They, even, they might even be temporary, we don't know. But at least they've got somewhere to go from the hell that they're in. And it's very important that when people get into hardship like that, because of dictators, that's when pe uh, people like ourselves or other people, youngsters today, need to help out. Not necessarily volunteer, but just go there and help. And it's very important that they do that. Because we don't know, it might be us one day. We haven't got a clue what's going to happen in the future. So it's very important that we've got people to go to that help us. Thank <laughs> you.